What's up, Forge FC fans? Scott McEwen here once again, and I'm joined alongside a guy who will not only give you the work on the pitch flying down the wing, but he's also pretty talented with some clippers in his hands. Chris Nanko, how you doing, man? How you feeling? I'm good. Good to be here. Always good to help out a, a friend in need. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already getting chirps over the head. So as you can tell, I've really been interested in, in really getting down and knowing your story, yeah. uh, just how you got here and kind of your journey to the CPL. But like Nanko already mentioned, I need a bit of a trim. So let's uh, let's get it going here. Let's do it. Have a seat. Nanko, talk to me here. Where did you start cutting people's hair? I, I seen on, on the Instagram, I saw the fire cuts you've been doing to, to the guys on the team on the yeah. road. I can't imagine, though, that they would just let you cut their hair just off a, off a whim. <laughs> first try. Yeah, so, um, I mean, when I was in high school, that's where it all started out, probably grade 12. So I went to St. Edmund Campion in Brampton, and they had, like, a cosmetology class or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I would go there. I wasn't in the class, but I would, uh, you know, take long, extended <laughs> washroom breaks <laughs> and go to the class and, and check out everything. Uh, it was an interest of mine. So, um yeah, I started uh, just lining up uh, myself uh, and then kind of got into it more in college. Uh, guys would let me, uh, my teammates in college would let me cut their hair. You know, everybody is looking for to save some money in college. So for sure. I'd be like, hey, I'll cut your hair for five bucks or something. So <laughs> Now I've seen on, uh, on Instagram, you and uh, your friend Markel, yeah. you guys started up Kicked Up Cuts. Yeah, that's and, correct. And so it's not a full-on barbershop yet, but it's a company you guys are working through it. How did that kind of come along? And what's your, your relationship with Martel? Um, yeah, so like literally, yeah, we just started that up on Instagram uh, last week. Um, you know, like there was like guys were talking to me about like some friends, close friends would talk to me about, you know, maybe starting up a, a barbershop because they knew I cut hair and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said like, you know, like I'm just focused on like soccer and like soccer was my whole life but I was like thinking you know like it might not be uh, the worst thing to have something to do on the side you know I have a lot of free time too as well for so sure. me and Markel we go we go way back so our brothers used to play soccer for each other uh, with each other and uh, so me and him like uh, knew each other since we were babies right. uh, our families are really close um, and yeah we've just been hanging out uh since we were since we were young watching our brothers grow up and play soccer following in their footsteps as well i think that just seeing that as a young guy like yourself looking into something like that already just shows like the maturity and and just the, the business mindset that you have to have yeah exactly uh my mom always used to tell me uh that she wanted me to go to school um just so i have that in, in my back pocket mm -hmm. and i would always uh disagree with her like i was like mom you know i'm going i'm gonna go pro i'm gonna go pro i have the ability uh, i ended up going going to school taking my mom's uh suggestions and stuff and going to school and i made it pro after as well so mm -hmm. now i have that degree in my back pocket and just speaking of school you spent four years at syracuse what was that experience like to be at such a historic school like syracuse just the the life on campus being a D1 athlete, how was that experience? Uh, that was one of the best experiences of my life. Like, I, I miss it st to this day. Mm. Um, yeah, it's Syracuse is like, it's a big school, you know, you, you hear a lot from them, uh, whether it's athletics or um, academics or even like, you know, just the, the outside social life about it. Because um, yeah. the seasons in the fall, we'd usually be playing through Thanksgiving and the coaches made sure that we were all at their house uh, having uh, like dinner together. Yeah. Uh, you know, bonding just so nobody uh, felt like they, they weren't uh, discluded or anything like that uh, or missing home as well. Let's talk a little bit about the CPL. Just last week was the, the year anniversary of Forge coming together and forming as a, as a professional team here in Hamilton. Yeah. What was it like for you to come back home and, and you and Becker, the first two signings of a franchise? Oh, it was amazing because um, you know, it was bringing something to Canada. Yeah. Uh, growing up, we never had like uh, this experience. We never had anything to look forward to. Um, Canada, uh, soccer was missing in Canada. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being able to start something up in Hamilton with, uh, with Becker especially uh, was a, a special thing because uh, being on Sigma, I grew up kind of like looking, looking up to Becker. He was one of the, the big guys uh, in the Sigma program. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, I remember we went to we went to Holland 
uh, when I first got to Sigma and just watching Becker play there and then he ended up staying there for a bit too. Um, it was it was special. After getting signed and you had to kind of wait to see what your team was going to look like, who was going to come in, what were the emotions when it all just came together and you guys were walking on the pitch for the first time? That was unreal. I've like never played in front of that many fans since like probably the U17 World Cup. Right, right. You know, just being in front of all those fans, it, it helps build uh, like build the intensity and just build that energy for the game, you know. Uh, we feed off the crowd and we love we love our fans. We think they're the best fans in the in the CPL. Mm -hmm. We know they're the best fans in the CPL. Um, you know, we have a good a great supporters group, the Barton Street Battalions. Uh, and yeah, like they they make uh, playing at Hamilton so much more enjoyable. How has it been for you guys just noticing that yeah, you're a brand new team in, in a territory maybe where people are used to just American football and not European football. How have you guys noticed like just the support system and, and trying to get people to buy into what you guys, the product that you guys are putting on the field? Yeah, the one thing uh, that I was skeptical, skeptical about was uh, whether or not fans would show up to the games. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was asking people, because uh, I'm from Brampton, I haven't really been out to Hamilton uh, right. growing up, so uh, whether or not people would show up to the games, I was asking people, uh, who, kn who knows anything about Hamilton? And uh, the one thing that they told me is that, oh, the Thai Cats play out there and uh, those games are like, uh, like super packed and everything like that. Yeah, There's a yeah. great atmosphere. And that Hamilton people are very, very passionate about the city and very passionate about their sports. And um, that, was, that was a great thing to hear. Uh, so once I, once I heard that, and I heard that soccer was coming to, to Canada and that soccer was going to be in Hamilton, I knew that people would show up. Even if we just look at uh, Wednesday's game, like we're talking about a Wednesday night, exactly. middle of a yep. week, and, and you guys are getting good crowds for that. Yep. It, it has to be something that is rewarding for players to see while you're playing. Because of course, yeah, you're playing a game you love, but you also want being in a professional league for there to be some sort of atmosphere, right? Exactly, yeah. I mean, the atmosphere, that's, that's kind of like what makes it all worthwhile. Um, and yeah, just for the fans to come out on a Wednesday night, uh, and I've seen them do it before, even in the rain on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, the it's, Forge Lockets. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah. We always get rain on game day. Um, but yeah, even, on a, even in the rain on a Wednesday night, it's something special to see, see them uh, do that. And I feel like that uh, really pumps the guys up and makes us want to play even harder. Before we, we I mean, finish it up here, what's the, the one thing that you could say to Hamilton fans heading into the, the back, not the back end, but into the, the fall season now? What's kind of the the one message that you would say to Hamilton fans? Um, yeah, just, you know, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, welcoming me with open arms. And, you know, thank you for the continuous uh, support throughout the, throughout the season. Um, and hopefully we can get this win on the weekend and uh, finish at the top at the end of the year. All right, Nanko, well, I appreciate it. Thank no you problem. very much for the haircut. Yep. I think my barber will be a little upset here because he <laughs> might have lost a customer. But uh, Forge fans, check out Forge FC and Chris Nanko back on the pitch uh, August 1st for their first leg of the Antigua game uh, coming up on August 1st. So catch that.